Hello, guys, and welcome to Comic Book Weekly. Isn't this weird? So I wasn't on last week. Now Mike's not on. The three of us are just never going to show up in the same. I'm, I'm not going to be on next week. Just I'm no. I'm kidding. Just just know. because, we'll just see. to make it, <laughs> just to, to make it uh, concurrent for sure. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, sadly, Mike uh, could not make it last minute. Um, he was planning on coming on, but life happens. So uh, hopefully all three of us will be on next week. Uh, but this is an exciting show, A, because we have a really cool topic, but also I did not do uh, my Comic Uno episode uh, for the show because I was on vacation. So it's always kind of fun for me, the crowd or Brent and Mike, like I had nothing out in the ether of what my favorite books are. So no one knows. Uh, yeah. what the top five is. I didn't even know until yesterday when I finished reading my <laughs> books at like midnight. Um, but uh, yeah, we there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to jump into the news first and then we will go into um, go into the comics. And there was like a, I had a pretty heavy haul. I had like 12 books. So that's, that's an average size haul for me. I won't say it's heavy, but it was like, oh, it was yeah. enough books to read. It was 22 for me. So damn. <laughs> yeah. I read too much yeah. still. You know, I don't think that's a bad thing, but I, I will say I, I'm not jealous because that sounds, I don't know how you get it all done. Uh, 12 yeah, was enough for exactly. me. And I was just like, oh, um, but I liked my books this week. Uh, so that that's always positive yeah. as well. Um, all right. So let's get into these news pieces. This one I literally just saw before we went on. So Marvel is going to kill the 2099 universe with Annihilation. Um, they've been doing a lot with 2099 wow. in the recent years. And uh, yeah. so that's cool that they're doing something with it. I particularly don't follow 2099, so I don't think it affects me, but sure. Yeah, it's that's weird. I had not seen that yet. Like you said, you just found it right before it came on. So, um, yeah, because Symbiote Spider-Man 2099 came out this week. And I actually that's the last book I read right before we came on. So it's kind of funny that that popped up. Um, yeah, it's interesting. They they have been doing a lot with it, like you said, but at the same time, for long periods, it's just like disappears. So um, it's interesting. I assume they're going to like do something big with it, like they relaunch it or something, kind of like yeah. make it in the ultimate universe in a different way, maybe. Who knows? You know, it's interesting too, because I'm we're not going to talk about this here, because A, maybe we'll make it a bigger topic. And literally, Tevia just asks about it. Um, maybe we'll make it a bigger topic, but most importantly, B, it's not officially announced but a lot of people have been talking about that maybe there's a dc ultimate universe and there's rumors that scott snyder is gonna head it so i feel like that's a really cool topic for like an evergreen topic when mike is here so we will most likely not talk about it because i think it is such a big topic if we're speculating obviously if it's yeah. announced we'll we'll talk about it but it's not anything that's here yet so there, we're not gonna right. chat about it in this show but i i don't think it's impossible to chat about because the, the universes, the alternate universes of Marvel and DC is definitely a big conversation right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, let's get into, I don't know if you wanted to, I don't even know if you saw it, but the Pa Kent was cast for the new Superman movie. I think it's no, someone it from is. The Walking Dead. I don't know his okay. name. Let me search it. Let me search it. Yeah. This is literally nice. something that happened today, too, and I wasn't able to put it on the, the sheet, but... John Kent is Pruitt Taylor Vince. I don't really know who he is. Again, I think he might be a Walking Dead guy from what I saw on the internet. But uh, it's cool that he looks different than your average John Kent. Like, I, I'm, I'm glad to get something visually different. Yeah, I his face looks familiar, but I can't place it. Yeah. Um, okay, that's definitely a different direction to go with Pa Kent. Yeah, for sure. Sure. Has pa, pa Kent ever been bald? I mean, not that I recall. Um, oh, Heroes, Heroes Reborn. He was the guy with the pennies, I think. With the oh, really? That's I think interesting. so. Yeah, if I if I remember correctly, yeah, I think that's who that is. Oh, that's that's actually pretty cool. I uh, haven't seen yeah. him in a while, so yeah. Uh, as we speak, we actually do have some a lot of media news from this week that has to do with comics, and the reason I. Mark them down, not because I, I love the franchises, but because I think it's really interesting that they're pulling it from the current comics that are doing really, really well. So the two pieces is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the, the last Ronin, is going to become a movie. And then yeah. there's a crossover Transformers G.I. Joe cro movie. 
I was like, oh, that's so interesting that these are things that are like very popular in comics right this second and they're making stuff out of it. Yeah. And also, you know, big 80s properties, which I mean, 80s sure. nostalgia has been like really ramping up the past several years. So it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, I I thought I would never see in my lifetime a Transformers G.I. Joe movie on the screen. So that's kind of crazy to me. Um, just the thought of what they could do with uh, The Last Ronin, though, visually, I think that could be really cool. So I'm excited about both of these. I just hope they're done well, uh, you know, with those kind of movies. <laughs> With Turtles movies and Transformers movies and G.I. Joe especially, it's like, oh, you just, you don't know what you're going to get. And sometimes it's not good. <laughs> so we'll have to wait. Yeah. And see. Is, did you watch the cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie? That was okay. Uh, the one that came out like last year, I think. I don't remember if I did or not, actually. <laughs> probably not then. I probably meant to and just never got around to it. I feel like you'd like that. It, it was like yeah. kind of in the vein of Into the Spider Verse. It had the same animation. That that was pretty solid. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. If there's any questions here? Why didn't they go with a animation for the last Ronin? Uh, honestly, good question. I feel like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would work better as an animated thing. I think we've seen the live action, and it tends not to work. I mean. I, I kind of like those movies, the the newer ones. Um, but, I mean, at least the first one. I think the first one was pretty good. Um, I don't know, though. I I think you could do a lot more with the world that's in The Last Ronin in animation, obviously, because it's a futuristic uh, kind of thing. you got all this high-tech stuff going everywhere. but And it seems like it would need to be like a higher-budget movie, especially with all the, all the fighting scenes and everything. So... Yeah, that's a concern. But at the same time, thinking about that visually live action would be really cool to see. So. Uh, no, I, I I think it'll be interesting when it comes about. I don't know what the year will be for the release, but yeah. I'm sure we, we have a little bit of time. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go into some more comic news here. So this is also something that was just in it. You know, no, we'll save the just announced stuff from today okay. for a little while. I know that the Peter Parker stuff, guys, we're going to we're going to talk about that last. So we'll we'll get yeah. to it. But uh, check, please. Heads to Webtoons. This is like a hockey BL gay comic that was really popular on Kickstarter. It's like one of the most yeah. funded comics on Kickstarter. And it was right. a web comic. So I think it was something that maybe was on Tumblr, but I, I'm pretty sure it was like its own website and mm. obviously did very well because the, they had a big fan base. I just think this is a really cool way to redistribute your comics. I think, you know, especially as like a business person and, and someone who runs their own comic publisher for both of us, it, you know, you always want to think of, okay, I finished this story years ago. Is there still a way to make money off of it? Is there still a way to uh, get another audience? And Webtoon's really that place to garner a new audience, especially for something like that. So I, I think it's a cool idea. If it's done, why why not do something with it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? Um, I am not too familiar with it. I, I know it from Kickstarter. And I just assume, like, because I knew it was webcom, but I didn't know where. So when it was like... When I saw the story and it was like, it's called like, a webtoon. I was like, isn't it already there? <laughs> I, I just didn't know. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, it, it makes sense, obviously. Uh, it's a, you know, a bigger platform than maybe it can even do on its own, even as big as it is. So, No, I, I agree. I'm curious to see what it'll look like. But Avatar did that too. You know, they they republished our yeah. comics there for something that made sense after the show. Sure. So I, I like seeing that to get different audiences. Yeah. All right, let's move on to you want to talk about Malar World because they they're bringing back that book you like the the nightclub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I I didn't care about the other one, the Prodigy one, but mm -hmm. uh yeah, the the nightclub, I really like that first volume Mike and I both did. Um and I'm excited to see, you know, a second volume, especially at, you know, everything like everybody died in that crossover, right? But everybody kind of came back or whatever. Uh so yeah, I, I just like those three characters and I, I think they're pretty cool. And I don't know where their story will head after the events of that first volume. So it's going to be interesting to see. So I'm going to check it out. Um, all right, let's go to, let's see. Um, 
Mm, let's talk about Je- uh, Jeff Lemire has a new boom book. The reason I want to talk about this is just I think it's interesting to see creators just go to different places than you're used to. But Jeff Lemire, he yeah. he really did a lot of just image comics, right? And obviously he mm-hmm. did like DC and Marvel. But, he, you know, a lot of these creators kind of stay at image and that's it. So it's cool that we're seeing like Tom King go to boom. Uh, you know, we we now have Jeff Lemire. It's like, oh, it's 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 cool to just kind of get some fresh faces at boom and just different publishers in general and see a, why they picked boom. Like it was like, Oh, is this the type of story they want to tell a boom because boom does these type of stories. So, you know, I, I just thought it was cool that they're, they're trying something different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I did want to share that real quick before I give my thoughts on the Lemire thing. Cause I think this is a really good point. Uh, Mike Manhattan says reason last Ronin isn't in animation is because our rated animated movies don't do well on the big screen. That, mm-hmm. Like, good that's point. a very good point, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and why obviously would it? With, yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So, but, you know, there's a lot of violence in Last Ronin. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, I, the only reason I didn't mark it was because there were no details on what the actual book was. So I didn't know what thoughts, but I do like that creators are, are trying out these different companies. And if you're like a boom studios fan and that's the most, what you buy, then you have an opportunity to buy a Jeff Lemire book now. So I, I think that's cool. You know, kind of what's the word spreading out um, your, uh, your um, properties through different publishers and stuff, because you're, again, you're reaching different fan bases. Cause some people are very um, like big fans of just like one, company you know like some people just buy all image comics or whatever so yeah i have to text phil because we just got over 40k for our kickstarter nice congratulations (laughs) thank you so if i was looking down at my phone that is the reason why we were like inching it's like oh is day two gonna give us that so uh now everyone knows we'll talk about that kickstarter after the news so get on the edge of your seat we will talk about witches of oz but uh yeah let's get into let's do some x-men stuff so marvel unveils new details for the new x-men ongoing series so this is not the gale one this is the i want to say jeb mckay yeah jeb mckay title so i i the reason i didn't mark this is like i didn't really know what new news they kind of gave i'm like didn't we already know the roster (laughs) yeah um man i read it earlier and i'm forgetting what the actual news was it uh let me let me go peruse it real quick um, While you do, I do want to answer Tevia. Demon Slayer got an R-rating animation movie and made a killer, but Demon Slayer is known to be a little bit more violent, and it's a Japanese property. So it's not like I think if you go into an American animated film like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you're thinking you could bring your kids. You know, if you see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you think you're bringing your yeah. kids. So I think that's the difference. Is like, oh, you're expecting an anime, and I don't know what the numbers were for that anime movie, but it's just like you have the audience of people who already like anime movies going there. People who love Demon Slayers. So that also brings the box office. But yeah, people are expecting that from something literally called Demon Slayer. Like you, you're thinking that's gonna be a little violent. Like if I, I, I'm, you're bringing your kids. It's like I think I might avoid the movie called Demon Slayer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, just kind of skimming this, I'm not really finding a whole lot of new information. The only thing is, there, I think they're going to be in Alaska, and I, the, the thing I wanted to comment on because I'm not sure we, I, I touched on this last time we talked about it was. I think it's really cool that Magic is on Cyclops' team just because of mm-hmm. that was one thing I really did like about the Crone Age was her like um, devotion to his leadership and like just her, you know, being honored to be a captain uh, under his, you know, leadership and stuff. I, I thought that was a cool relationship that they were building as far as like a mentor mentee kind of thing. Sure. So I like to see them on the same team. I always just want to like magic. So that's always, I always yeah. say that. I'm just like, I just sure. want to like magic. So if there's an opportunity right. to, to like her, then that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's do, let's see. Let's get, we will talk about NYX. We got there. You know what? Let's do it now. NYX. Uh, this does not have the original NYX team, which probably is smart if you want to sell a book. Uh, like it, it's like, mm-hmm. who's that girl? Uh, they actually got some more popular people. So they got most, the three being, uh, I would say the biggest, obviously Laura, and then you got one of the Cuckoos, and then you got Miss Marvel, which I actually think is really smart. Um, I'm very excited for this. They compared it to the Runaways, and you guys know we're both very big Runaways fans. And I wanted to see what Miss Marvel does here. Maybe this would be a place that she can find a voice in the X-Men, because she definitely has not done that yet. So 
I am very, very much anticipating that. Yeah, I mean, Laura makes sense, obviously. That's why they got the title, probably, because she's in it. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a really good cast of characters here. I like Prodigy. I think he's a cool character. And Oli is somebody that we don't see a whole lot. And I, I feel like at one time they were really trying to push that character. Um, and then he just kind of faded into the background. But all in all, I think this is a really good cast. And if you're not going to give Miss Marvel an ongoing solo thing, this is something that at least we can see her in, just like Champions was. So um, I'm a little sad we don't just get to focus on her and her supporting cast. But at the same time, surrounded by these characters, if it's you know good story, I'm, I'm down for it. I agree. Uh, moving on to Jean Grey. So we got some yeah. details on this Phoenix book. Let me see if we have the. You right won't here, be getting I it, I don't think. After. No, I, 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 Jean Grey, <laughs> no pun intended, always burns me. I just don't really care about the character that much. Well, plus, it's in space. It's taking That's place you. in space. Yeah. I'm good. So, <laughs> yeah, it's that was an interesting direction to go for her. So she's. I forget why she's there. I, I know I mean, she it makes like, sense for the Phoenix, the... though. That does True. make sense. Yeah, it does make sense for the Phoenix. But she like has to go out to the edge of space for, for some reason. Um, I'm trying to remember what the reason was that she had to go out there. Uh, it was like to help with something or rescue somebody or something like that. We have seen this correctly. with X-Men characters, though. Like Kitty oh, has done course. it. Cyclops has done it. Like yeah. It's not really new. Yeah. At the same time, I really like Stephanie Phillips' writing, so mm-hmm. I, I'm definitely going to give this a, a shot. Um, yeah, I was just trying to skim it again and see why she was out in space, but I'm not finding it yet. Oh, an SOS from Nova brings her to the edge of okay. this black hole. Yeah, that's that's what it was. So yeah, it's you know it makes sense for Gene. It's interesting, and I like the creative team, so I'll check it out. But I, I totally get that it's not really your thing. Yeah, I, I unless it's a real light week, I think I'll, I'll be skipping yeah. that. Yeah, uh, let's let's get into this. Actually, was announced today too. I I, I know you read this book, so James, this yeah. is big news that James Sinian is returning for a nice house on the lake and it's like nice house by the sea or something like that. And it is with DC, so I'm I was yeah. pleasantly surprised by that one. I guess like they own it, so like if you want to continue it, I don't think he was able to like say no. Mm. But you know that's that was interesting because they don't really have those type of books anymore, like a Vertigo style indie book yeah right exactly i thought this was interesting news because the way the first one ended i I just didn't see a sequel coming at all it just it came out of left field for me but i mean that's that's cool i don't know that i would invest in it just because the first one got delayed so bad that i Mm. forgot everything by the time it was one of those books like the first half came out like like clockwork and then the second half just dragged on and on and on to the point where i completely forgot most of the story and all the characters by the time it was over and so i i I couldn't i didn't get that punch that i probably should have from the book unfortunately but uh yeah if if, uh if it did well enough to garner a sequel cool by all means yeah i mean people definitely seem to like it so it wasn't my bag either but uh you know I'm, i'm glad for the people that enjoy the title all right, let's get into something I am very excited for. Daredevil Woman uh, Without Fear is getting their own book yeah. from the same writer who did the Gang War, so Erica Schultz is doing it. Yeah, and okay. I'm really excited because we both have not, I don't think three of us were have been reading Daredevil looks, and Matt Murdock kind yeah. of bores me, if I'm being honest, at least this current version. But yeah. Electra always interests me as just herself as Electra, but her as Daredevil has been a lot of fun and just fresh and the only thing i really liked from gang war was that series and i was like oh i kind of wish it wasn't attached to gang war because there's some really cool stuff here so i'm i'm very excited it seems like they don't say it's a mini series that doesn't mean it isn't uh right. but it's it could be an ongoing if it's an ongoing even better i mean that gang war book i i agree with you completely it was like the best part of gang war and if there was no gang war ties to it that would have been a, just a, a wonderful story to follow. And especially if they're going to like bring Bologna into there as well and, and mm-hmm. you know, kind of continue that thread. Um, yeah. I, I think Electra as Daredevil works so well and uh, Erica writing it because she did such a good job on, on that um, mini series um, or that, you know, whatever that was, that little tie in. Um, yeah. I, I'm really excited. Tie-in. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm equally really excited about this. I can't wait for it actually, and I hope it is an encore. And I agree with that. The Bologna, um, I, you know, the one thing I didn't love about her character was I was like, oh, I wish there was more room to do right. this. And I was like, oh wait, now there is, and and because she was a, she was a cool concept. She, she was a cool character. It's just like, oh yeah. yeah, you also need to connect this to a larger story. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm sure Mike is excited for it too, because uh, again, yeah. we all. We all enjoyed that. Uh, Last but not least, the big elephant in the room, which is Peter Parker being Green Goblin. Now, I saw a lot of comments, and they're like, I hate this idea. Um, I don't know if I do hate it, because it actually has been built up in the series. Like, that arc that we really liked, we got to see uh, him be evil. And I was like, do I want to just see Norman as Green Goblin again? No, I think there could be this interesting, like, I need to save Peter aspect. So, you know, I think it's a little weird, but... I won't say it's the most left field thing out of what I've seen as Spider-Man recently. I was like, oh, there's yeah, there's yeah. been puzzle pieces to get here. Yeah, there there definitely have. And you know, it, it was uh it, it's kind of interesting that they almost teased like Norman coming back as the Green Goblin and then they swerve you with this. Um yeah. so very interesting and, and I like being swerved in comics. I like being surprised. And this definitely surprised me. I I remember uh, you posted it right in our little group chat. I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and uh, I was like, I, I posted like dot dot dot, <laughs> right. and I didn't see it coming. Then Mike was like, WTF? <laughs> and we were just like all three just like blown away by this. Um, really unexpected news. As far as how I feel about Peter Parker being a Goblin character, I, I'm conflicted. I've got conflicting feelings about it because on the one hand, it makes sense story wise. Like you said, they've they've sprinkled bread comes crumbs to get us here, but at the same time, it's like this was the character that killed his girlfriend. <laughs> this Hi. was that persona, and to take that specific guys on is just a little. I I don't know how I feel about that. Like from that standpoint, you know, it, it in one sense it kind of makes sense, especially if he's fighting the Sinister Six as as that image depicts. Um, maybe he has to tap into something greater than himself, the combined powers of the goblin and the spider together, the only way to defeat it. And it, it makes sense. It's, it's a powerful story in that way, but it I just have to see how he gets too. there. Yeah. 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 So I just it, have to see how he gets there and why he makes that choice, I guess. It might not make any sense. Look, we, we huh. know that from Maze yeah. experiment, but uh, right. you know, I wasn't, I thought this is, we never saw it because Te- Tevye is uh, not this surprise this surprise sucks. <laughs> He's saying there's <laughs> not good ones. Um, yeah. I'd be interested to hear why you think that, besides the idea that you want everything to be status quo, right? But that's boring. I could, if I wanted everything to be status quo, I, I, I would just read my old comics, right? Like, I, I don't like being bored. I just, I like yeah. just something to engage me. But he mentioned that it failed the last time. But I don't, the thing that interests me here is I don't remember Peter Parker ever being Green Goblin in me either. This, yeah. <laughs> in this universe. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. And I, I don't know. It, it's just weird. Like the design looks kind of cool, though. It's almost yeah. like one of those mashup, you know, dream kind of things that, you know, some, you know, it'd be like a, a fun fan thing to put together. So, and, uh, you know, I, I'm at least happy that the creative teams are having fun with writing Spider-Man, Something. even if we're not enjoying it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm just curious about this. I, I need it to be here so I can find out what the heck is going on. So. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm i interested to see where it goes to. So that was a big topic. We are... We'll go to my Kickstarter, then we're going to talk about some comics. Again, I was saying earlier, the, you know, not revealed what I think about any comics, so we'll we'll see how I feel about some of them. Uh, yeah. But yeah, let's uh, let's talk about Witches of Oz. So this this premiered Kickstarter yesterday. You're going to see the dashboard as you always do somehow. Um, this is you know a book we're really proud of. It, we have Terry Moore art. So Terry Moore legendary strangers in paradise uh motor girl rachel rising did cover art for this we have uh, a couple of versions we have black white version because that's what his art style usually is and we have the color version you see here is the thumbnail which is our wicked homage the original art there's two pieces there's the cover the original cover art and then there was like what the cover would have been so you had a sketch those sold out in the first five minutes <laughs> which was nice. kind of crazy so yeah this it, we're really proud of the campaign 
Uh, if you ever want to see Glinda and the Wicked Witch together, kind of like what Wicked has always teased, this is this story, uh, and it's connected to the universe that uh, we had with the Beast and Snow, which is our our Snow White and Beauty and Beast book. We had uh, our Alice in Wonderland Sleep of Beauty book that's connected to. But you don't need to read those stories to understand this story. But if you do like connected worlds, go check it out. We're super proud of it, like I said. Um, cool. Let's uh let's get in some comics. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it on to. Well, oh, this is funny. Um, did you guys already talk about Keanu Sorry. Reeves being cast as Shadow? Um, yeah. It was on the list, but I don't think any of us cared no. enough to talk about it. <laughs> I, I haven't seen the second one yet, so it didn't really... Me either. Like, well, yeah. So I've only seen the first cool. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. I like the first one, but yeah. But now we'll go into the top five. We'll, yeah, we'll let's do it. In our best <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay, let's see. Where are we starting? Let me get over to the screen. Well, we're going to start off big. So Transformers number seven, first issue of the new arc, first issue of the mm -hmm. new artist. What would you think? Did you like the new art? Did it did it um, throw you at all? Was it? No. I mean, it was a little I, different. It was a yeah. little different, but I don't think it threw me. I think the thing that I didn't love about this issue is it had a lot to do with the robots. So I was just like, who's mm. that? I got really, maybe it was the art. I got really confused of who people were. I was like, is which that robot? What's that robot? And it, it didn't have as much of the uh, personal connection. You get a little bit of Carly. You don't really get yeah. anything. I think his name is Spike. You don't really get anything from him. Uh, so it definitely was more of an action robot issue, which is not my particular taste. But, yeah. uh, you know, I don't think the art change was a big deal. So that was good. Yeah, yeah. The art kind of it, it, it complimented uh, Johnson's, I think. It was a little different. I, I agree with you. There were a couple of times I had to reread a couple of panels to see who was actually there. I think it was like the, the flashback scenes or on Cybertron, especially when they were showing like uh, Cup and a couple of others. I was like, who who is this and who is that? So I, I totally get that. I understand that for sure. When that's that's always my fear with the Transformers book when you start introducing more and more characters because there's so many characters in that cast mm -hmm. that you're you, you start getting confused of what's going on and who's who and all that stuff. So I hope they don't fall into that trap with this book, but that's that part of it aside. I agree with you. There wasn't enough character stuff. I did like that. Carly was kind of stonewalling RC. I thought that kind of uh, played into what she's feeling. So we still got to feel what she was feeling. And I thought that emotion was still on her face and everything. So, um, but yeah, it wasn't like the best issue of this run so far. Um, I still enjoyed the book. I still love the book, but I, I'm, I want, I can't wait till next issue to see what's going on, you know, past sure. this because they kind of set up a few things in this issue. Uh, you know, the, who's leading the Decepticons, what happened to Starscream, Optimus is like having, I assume because Spike's dad went into the Matrix, he's he's getting memories kind of from the human side now is what, what that baby in running the, the tree was about. So I, I thought that was interesting. I want to see where that goes. See, all those little so, things confused me so much because I'm like, I only know yeah. one Transformer. I'm like, who's doing what? And, you know, <laughs> infamous Mike Manhattan said there wasn't a lot of action. And maybe I misunderstood the action with the robots shouting at each other. I mean, like, do this, do that, you know? Yeah. I mean, on Cybertron, they opened up with a action scene, I thought, with the, all the stuff on Cybertron. They were running from the Decepticons or whatever. And, and then it's you actually have a long. Yeah. And then you had the a battle long between. Scene. <laughs> yeah, the battle between Soundwave and Starscream was action. Uh, Optimus driving was action, crashing into a tree. It was, it was a lot of action, I thought. Just not a lot of, you know, Autobots versus Decepticons action. So We have yeah. uh, Tevye says, how do you feel about Starscream uh, getting killed by Soundwave? I don't know who they are. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, who's you know, Starscream and who's Soundwave? You know who Starscream is. Starscream's like the, he was the leader throughout the whole first arc, the, the, Plain. See, I but, only know like by visual. I'm like, yeah, okay. but if you tell me who Scar's, like, I don't know. Uh, the one that was squishing then, humans. That's okay. Starscream. Oh, he's the yeah. he's the villain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah. Soundwave? So, Soundwave is the the cassette tape guy. Oh, he's that the has, one like, that has like the, the bean, the like the like the music thing. He's like a yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. He's a boombox. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it was those two fighting for who is leading the Decepticons. Is what happened in that scene. And Soundwave supposedly killed Starscream and took over the leader as leader. So Not that's what happened in that one. Yeah. Interesting. So. Um, but yeah, I have a feeling that Mike really liked Transformers, if I had to guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I would say so. I, you know, Soundwave is one of his favorite Transformers, so mm-hmm. seeing him, you know, kind of beat Starscream and become the leader is uh, definitely something that would be cool to him. It's cool to me as well. So, All right. Let's move past Transformers into Ultimate X-Men issue number two, which for me was better than the first issue. You did. You think the opposite. I'm... I, I can already tell. <laughs> um, I was no. also laughing at the comments. Cat's got you. Okay. Really, she doesn't. Um, no, I yes, but also you read me correctly. I did not like this issue that much. But I, the reason why um, I didn't like this issue as much is be oh, my computer went crazy. Um, is because of the manga style where it's very slow. So we're like, oh, we're talking. You know, it, it's. Because manga, you get to read in like five issues, whatever, together. You're like, wow, that was a really good experience. But it doesn't work for the comic as I much. Agree. Like, it doesn't work for the the medium as much. So, I just thought it was really slow. Yeah, I I still don't love the book. Like, I had a lot of issues with the first issue, and the reason I wanted to continue on is because I wanted to see when Nico comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the reason I like this issue better was because you introduced another character with Maystorm. And I, I like the interaction between her and uh, Armor. I can't remember Armor's real name. But uh, I, I like those two together. And I like that they expanded a little bit on this mysterious shadow figure. Uh, so I it gave me a little bit more than that first issue did, I guess, to, to keep me going until the Nico stuff. Because uh, w- if it was just like issue one, I, I don't know that I would want to stick around until Nico got there. I think for issue one, what I liked a little bit more was the idea of this like boy who died. There was like a little mystery. Yeah. This one, you don't really have that as much. You have like a little bit of it. But again, it, it goes back to like the sure. style of the comic. It's 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 you're reading it like you should be reading it for trade, but it's not being released that way. Yeah. It's, just, it's very yeah. there's hardly any cliffhanger. Like it, it's just right. like doesn't it doesn't oh, read that- like a comic. That's my main nitpick about this book is the the way each issue ends just like makes no sense to me. It, it's mm. so flat. It's so flat, and it doesn't leave anything to be like, oh, I gotta get this. Ne-. It, it's like, did they leave out a page in this comic? Right. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, I agree with you. All right. So next up, we have Action Comics one thousand sixty four. This was. Was this the first part of the Brainiac, House of Brainiac? Or the it is. It's, the, it's the first part. Um, yeah. I, I really like this issue. I was like pleasantly yeah. surprised by it because I didn't love the uh, the Bizarro chapters, which I know was written uh-huh. by like, Jason Aaron and then this is yeah. Joshua Williamson. But I, I liked the opener. I really enjoyed like Lois just having a fun time and you don't really understand like why she allows herself to have a fun time. They never really answer that question. Of, like, oh, this day yeah. is important, but we don't know why. Uh, and then yeah. I, I liked Brainiac taking over the Superman family, but then also other people being involved. So I just thought it was a really good way to introduce uh, an event. DC's been doing a lot better with that. Yeah, and I, I still like that he doesn't know if he can trust Lex still. And if this is part sure. of Lex, because Lex has such a, you know, history with Brainiac and, and all that. So yeah, there's so many interesting threads with this. And I, I definitely want to know what the special day is for Lois. And I, I hope yeah. that's like, I hope we eventually find out what the heck's going on with that. Cause it's just like this whole throwaway thing, but it was like the basis of the whole first part of the issue. So uh, and it was fun. It was fun seeing her just like go out and then just like in the middle of this day, of course, everything's going to go to go to crap. But uh, yeah, I really like this issue as well. Um, I don't know how I'm going to feel when all the Lobo stuff uh, starts flowing into it. But because uh, I, I don't like Lobo, but I, I think the way that they're. Yeah, I think the way they're bringing him in, though, is kind of fun, especially if you, if it ties into like that Guy Gardner backup story and Green Lantern. Uh, we'll have to see. But. Yeah, I, I really like this issue. As well. I wouldn't know because I didn't read the backup story. But you didn't read, read the backup main. story. No, I never. I tend unless someone I read. I mean, Guy Gardner is not like got to read that one. I, I tend not yeah. to read the backup stories because they don't really usually connect okay. so much. I, I mean, besides you got the, the the very few of like Sinister Sons. Like obviously, if you read yeah. that backup story, you got something out of it. But then, you know, I wasn't originally yeah. interested. In anyways, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't have picked up Sinister <laughs> Sons. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about Green Lantern, and I'll, I'll talk about why I think maybe mm-hmm. it'll tie in later. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited think, to chat yeah. about it. That way I can learn. 
<laughs> yeah. So let's get into our number fives. Then mine actually was action comics. So uh, there you go. What's yours? Mine was Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I have a lot to say about this issue. So I actually liked it because we we got yeah. you know something we were talking about from the our previous discussion from two weeks ago. I was like, let Peter let Peter be with a girl. Let let him hang out. Let him date. So I, I thought it was cool that we got this you know, new girl, but then, you know, it's kind of the same conversation of our previous It's just like, okay, where does it go? If she becomes a new Mary yeah. Jane, what are you going to do with her? Like, it's just like, right. you're, you're always getting into the same problem. But I also liked Mary Jane kind of being, I won't say a wingman, but being a friend, like it was kind of cool yeah. for them to be able to have that conversation I mean, like, you could tell that, which I don't know if I love or hate, but like they're best friends now. They're not romantically entangled anymore. And honestly, if you can't have them together, let them be BFFs. Like I want to see them interact. I want to see their connection. So I enjoyed that. Yeah. I love seeing Betty again. I don't like Chasm though. So that's the part where I'm just like, I don't care about him. But everything else, like the Peter stuff, I enjoyed. I like him when he's been Riley Scarlet the Spider. I don't like him in any other way, you know? Right. <laughs> it's 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 so weird. I do like Paolo Z though. So I... And I, I like the way that they at least came into the issue. I thought it was fine. Uh, but I, I do like Peter getting back out there. It is a little weird for me seeing her, them so comfortable. It feels like it should be a little bit more awkward at this point. But at the same time, I, I agree. There's so much history between them, those two, and like on again, off again kind of thing that it does make sense that she would kind of be there for him in this situation. She's moved on. You know, he's finally accepted it. And now they can be just they, they they're not going to be out of each other's lives. That's just not going to happen. There's too much there and the, the, too much history and stuff. And so. she's a fan favorite character. Why would we not want her in yeah. this story? <laughs> it, absolutely. So, yeah, I enjoyed it as well. It's just outside of my top five. But uh, I, I did really like this one. It was a, definitely a step up for the book. So Cool. All right. Moving on, Amazing Spider-Man was the next book we were going to talk about, so uh, we just did that. Uh, Batman and Robin, issue number eight, is next. Um, I have mixed feelings about this Me too. Me too. I did not like Flatline very much in this because of that whole sister story. I was just like, oh, man. I was expecting so much more, and then she ends up at the school at the end, and then one thing I dislike about that is that they keep making this school really really important without putting any of the legwork in or i'm like i don't yeah. really know the personality of the school who's there it's just like it's just kind of anytime they get lost they're like let's go back to the school and yeah, uh exactly. and just go back uh, and then i didn't like the batman stuff very much so it, it just felt and the artwork wasn't as strong i was actually pretty disappointed with this issue especially because i like this character a lot i like flatline yeah i like flatline a lot as well the- I guess the problem, I mean, all that stuff that you mentioned, I I agree about the school because when I go back to like a book like Gotham Academy, it's like the school had a personality. You knew every one of the characters and everything. So I'm not really getting that vibe here. I think we got it a little bit early on with like the, the, the boys kind of hating on Damien and yeah, that, that little bit. But um, since then we haven't really gone back and made that part of the story. Hopefully we get that now that plot lines there as well. Um, which is really odd that she just shows up and starts going to school there. Uh, the sister stuff, like both with Flatline and with Shush, I felt like mm-hmm. both of them were like, I'm on your side. Oh, no, I'm not against you. Oh, now I'm on your side. Oh, no. It was like this flip flop and it was very quick, very, it just, it didn't feel organic to me. It felt like, okay, we got to get her at this point right now. And a couple pages later, she's got to be at this point. So we're just going to, I don't know. It just felt a little. I don't know what the word is, but it just everything was really abrupt in this issue. Yeah, I'm trying to find the word too. It was very like disjointed, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So I, I didn't love that. And maybe if this, I don't know what what the story means. It just felt like it was a little all over the place. So um, I don't know if it needs to slow down a little bit. If it, I, I don't know what it needs the to be is. one place. I think I think that's their answer is that they keep ju- is like Batman's here, yeah. Robin's here. Do here's a school, here's not the school. Like just like do that was honestly yeah. what really worked for the Robin series that they were on the island. It was the same characters yeah. they were interacting with. It just like yeah, it just feels like very disjointed and and it, and yeah. I almost feel Batman is so forced, which. It probably yeah. is for us. I'm guessing, you know, the I could only guess, but, you know, Joshua Williamson probably always wanted to make a Robin series, but they're like, oh, it's not selling as much as if you have Batman in it. So yeah. it, it definitely feels like Batman is not there for organic reasons. 
Yeah, yeah. And like you said, where it feels like it's all over the place, it's there's so many like little threads you're trying to follow. You're trying to follow, you know, who is Shush and how is she tied to the school and Damien and, and Manbat and that whole story and then Flatline and Flatline's sister. And then it, there's this and then the kids at the school. It's just so many different threads and hopefully it all connects in the end and makes sense to why all these things are interconnected. But right now it just feels like, oh, let's throw this out there and see if that works and we'll follow that thread oh no that one's not working so let's throw that. that's what it feels like but hopefully mm -hmm. not so anyway yeah on the fence about that one all right so mighty Morphin power rangers the return issue number three is up next we get the big reveal of uh selena repulsa and uh you know now all the power rangers are there and uh you know the big cliffhanger at the end as well which i was very interesting to me yeah um, me too how are you yeah, I, I, I'm actually really enjoying the series. And uh, I, you know, yeah, no, go ahead. No, I agree. I was going to say, I love this series. I think it's yeah. really accessible. Like people who, you know, you don't know anything about Power Rangers get into right. it. This issue in particular, it couldn't be pick of the week because I think there was a little times where it got a little yeah. talky. A lot of like, yeah. you know, obviously the Amy Jo Johnson, I don't think has written a comic before. I know there's like a co-writer, but um, there's this, this feels a little bit like, oh, you know, you learn that on the job type thing. It's like, oh, this is how yeah. you kind of cancel out some exposition. Um, but I love the ending. I like these characters a lot and I liked what it had to say. It's good art. Uh, it's a good series. Yeah, I, I really like the art and. Like I said, that that reveal, I, I won't spoil it here, but that reveal at the end, it was like, oh, okay, that's really interesting and really cool. I can't wait to see where that goes. And it feels like maybe this is ushering in a new like generation of uh, Power Rangers, which could be fun. Um, and yeah, so I if, if you're not reading this, if you like Power Rangers, you don't like Power Rangers, go check it out because it's a, it's a really fun book. It's a really cool character driven book too. I would say if you yeah. like action, I don't know if you should be reading this because I don't I don't think they've really done any action stuff. But that's kind of what I like about yeah. it. Like the main series is the action and the mythos. This is just to tell a cool character story about, you know, these these characters you already like. Yeah, absolutely. It's, there's a lot of in those first couple of issues, there's a lot of emotional punches with that too. And this one is kind of picking up and and it's like, you know, revenge from Rita's daughter kind of thing. So it's, you know. It's a fun series, though. Everything Boom does with Power Rangers is just fantastic. So, yeah, I love it. I never it thought I would, missed the beat. Yeah, I never thought I'd be a Power Rangers fan. <laughs> and here I am. I can't get enough of it. I'm glad because I think I said this in previous shows, but I'll say it again: it is the best team book that's on stands right now. I don't think anything yeah. really beats it. No, I, I completely agree with that. All right, so let's get into our number fours, Cat. What was yours? Um, mine was Phantom Road, which I don't think you read, no. uh, but it, 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 it's so good at pacing itself. It reveals information. It, it reveals just the right amount of information each issue. And this one in particular, it's the end of the arc. So we get to see a little bit what's behind uh, the mystery of these like bear things. This, this, uh, the, I don't know how it would describe it, but it is like bear figure um and then we also get the emotional weight of what happened to our two main characters uh one uh was abused and the other one killed their son by accident so they actually got to see that for each other so they talk about it and they you know get a little closer uh it's a really good again character driven book with a, a solid mystery that i i think just keeps getting me to want to pick up more it's it's one of those series that even when it's on a break i'm like oh i genuinely want to see where this goes next because sometimes with mysteries I'm like ah oh, it was five months ago i don't need to read it but every single time it comes back i'm like no oh, i want to i want to see where it goes it always keeps your interest that's good I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it i just it wasn't my thing that's what it boils down to i can see yeah. that for sure for you it's, it's a little dark everyone's talking yeah. about me not being on the show last week it, it's happened yeah. before <laughs> yeah we always make a big deal about it like nobody's gonna watch because you're not here <laughs> that's so funny um i mean no one did i'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you and i always make the same joke about mike oh yeah so yeah and and, and brand you always come on the show so usually when you're out yeah. well, you're usually not absent too often but when you no. are absent when you are absent we we miss you yeah and everyone you, does too you, they're like who is the other yeah. guy 
<laughs> one one day people will learn my name. That's all right though. It's I Brett, it was, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Funny. <laughs> I'll tell you. Somebody came to my door the other day and was like trying to sell me on something, and I said my name once, and they they knew it like immediately, and they're like Brent, right? B R A N T. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was like so shocked that somebody even spelled it right. I was like, oh my god, I'm about to give me a heart attack right here. You uh, guys gotta use Brent's name more often in the comments yeah. <laughs> to remind nobody everybody what it is. Spells my name or says my name right. It's so funny. Anyway, um, <laughs> my number four is a, a new book from Ahoy called Dead Weights, issue number one. I, don't know uh, I actually read it. I did read it. Did um, yeah, it was interesting because I I like the concept. I thought it was cool. Yeah. But then there's moments where I was just like, oh, I kind of wish they did even more. Like, it was just like, mm. I don't know if I feel fully attached to this book right now, but. Yeah. I thought it was an interesting enough concept. I, I don't know if I'll pick up the next issue, but I I didn't hate it. But I also didn't yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. I I like the fact that these weren't like when I went into it, I thought these were just like random minions that were just kind of that kind mm-hmm. of thing. But when it turned out they were like part of this like super villain team and they were like, you know, key characters in that team, I, I thought that was more interesting that they were just like, yeah, especially the one character, like, I'm done with this life. I, you know, I want to do better and all this stuff. And even like him realizing that the destruction they caused kind of killed this person's son that is being so kind to them or whatever. And it, it was just like, there was, you know, gut punches like that. That was like, oh man, that, that that's really strong storytelling i thought and then like the whole turn with why can't you just let us be and then you realize like the heroes aren't maybe as altruistic as you want a superhero team to be and they're just like enjoying beating the crap out of these villains and stuff like that i thought there was enough there to uh kind of bring me back for an issue too so mm-hmm. i i enjoyed like the levels of it i i think so i i think it could be a really cool story um definitely a mini series you know vibe to it but at the same time i really enjoyed it so that's Dead Beats. All right. Let's move on to our next book, which is Green Lantern. So we we teased that a little bit. We'll talk about the main story, and then I'll get my thoughts on that backup story. So what did you think? Green Lantern's back in space, reconnecting with the core, uh, figures out what's going on on Oa and how they've taken over everything, getting caught up to speed, and, you know, of course, jumping the gun like Hal always does <laughs> and getting himself in trouble. I think it was, uh, I like the issue because I like Green Lantern, yeah. but it missed my top sure. five because gotcha. it was a lot of exposition. <laughs> it was like, mm-hmm. we're up to this, we're doing that. But it was also really cool to see all these Green Lanterns, like Jess and uh, even Joe and, and Boz. So it, it was cool to see that. It's still, I mean, I love this series, uh, but I don't think this is the strongest issue of, of this series. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. At the same time, I liked seeing the the different Green Lantern characters finally, you know, getting back together and and trying to sort out what's going on. I, you know, it it played well to all their personalities. Hal being like the you know, okay, I'm not gonna sit around and wait. I'm gonna you know mm-hmm. jump into action that kind of thing, even though it was the wrong move and like messed up everything. Uh, and I, I like that we brought Kelly Teen Lantern back into it because people were asking, well, what about Teen Lantern and stuff like that? And there she was. And uh, so she's, you know, central to that story as well. I thought that was interesting. We learned a little bit more about, um, you know, like who's in who's in control of these like uh, I forget what they were called, the the ones that can change the ring color and all that stuff. Um, so I, I like aspects of it. Definitely not the best issue of the run, but I, I still enjoyed the issue. So. Um, um, as far as that wait. backup story, oh, go ahead. No, 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 keep going. We have a question, but you go to the backup story first. Okay, real quick. As far as the backup story goes, um, the reason that I'm curious about it is because he was hunting who he thought was Lobo, who was oh. like hiding out in the intergalactic wrestling thing that we saw in the Flash. Um, so, and he, and it's this masked guy that's calling himself the main man. He's definitely. He could be Lobo or he could be like tied to Lobo because he like knew the space dolphins. He he was definitely from that planet and everything. So I wonder if he actually is Lobo and how that's going to tie into the whole thing with Superman and everything. So that that was the reason I enjoyed that. But. No, I could see that actually tying in now that you mentioned Lobo because like you said, yeah. Lobo is going to be a big part. So there you go. Sometimes the backup stories do 
something. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the question was from uh, Parker Locke. Kat and Brandt, here's a question. You both outside of mainstream or Kickstarter projects, do you read independent comics at all? Um, I feel like we've proven that here, but I guess it depends on what you mean by independent comics. So I feel like right. everyone has different meanings to that. Like mainstream comics, honestly, I would consider as boom and image, even though they're in the companies, like they are mainstream comics. Uh, but like Ahoy, like we just mentioned that, like, is that mainstream? I don't know. I think it's it's the publisher people know. Uh, and then Kickstarter for me is where you're getting like the real underground indie books. And then obviously you still have boom and uh, yeah. you know, um, vault on there. So I guess, yeah, the question is, what do you consider indie comic? Cause I, I think I, I, I can't imagine there being other books out there that I, I have to read. Um, cause I feel like yeah. we, we cover it all. <laughs> yeah. So like, it's interesting you say aside from Kickstarter, because like a lot of people that use Kickstarter are those people that you see at conventions that are, that are like pushing their self-published stuff and that kind of thing. That's, you know, where, you know, Kat and I started before Kickstarter and, you know, and stuff like that. I, you know, out there doing the convention thing. And, um, you know, there's definitely people not doing Kickstarter. They're still like at conventions and kind of, you know, selling their stuff many. out of there. Yeah. They, they, they got to somehow make money, right? Like I can't, yeah. I, I, there's very rare people I've found that hasn't used a crowdfunding site because there's just so much money these days to make a comic. So it's pretty hard to self fund unless yeah. you are very rich or have a really right, good day right. job, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I, I haven't been to a convention in a while. I'm going to start back at the end of this month, actually, um, at uh, Central Texas Comic Con in Waco. If anybody's uh, in the area, I'll be there not this coming weekend, but next weekend. So, um, but yeah, so I, I'm sure there are a few out there. I just lost my ear, but, but uh, I, I don't know a whole lot of them. Uh, so I, I haven't read any of those. Like if there's anybody that's not like on crowdfunding and stuff, but there's so many independent creators, self publisher otherwise, um, and small publishers and all that stuff that we try at least. Uh, and we've talked about some on the show, some we Dead don't. Deadweights is a good but, example. You know, that's yeah, a Dead Weights comic. is a good example. Yeah. So I, I think companies like that, like, you know, we we hear company, but, you know, some of them are more, you know, established than others. And some of them just have a couple of titles. Uh, you know, Terry Moore is an independent creator, whether yeah. as big as Strangers of Paradise is, he's one person that, you know, puts out all these books. So. Which we cover a lot on here. We love covering Terry yeah. Moore. So, um, yeah, we try our hardest to to read everything. Like, I mean, we've talked about it here too, and that's what I love about our show is that we're all very, very well rounded in different ways. You know, um, yeah. webtoon. We talk about it almost honestly at a weekly basis. Like, I, I, I don't think a lot of, I, I don't know, but I, I don't think a lot of the traditional comic book podcasts are talking about that. Um, we talk about Kickstarter again, another facet. Maybe someone would talk about, but not everybody. Uh, we talk about the indie books in the direct market. We talk about graphic novels in the direct market. So, um, point being is, we try to cover everything. Is it is it possible to read literally everything? No, um, but we we read as much as we can. And for this show, it's interesting because we we don't get to review the Kickstarter books very often. A yeah, mostly because it's a conflict of interest, like. We know, I know a lot of people that work on Kickstarter. A lot of them are friends. So it's yeah. kind of weird to review their stuff. Um, yeah. I tend not to do that. Uh, but I, you know, on my channel, right. I do the top 10 Kickstarters. That way I can promote them in a different way. Like, you know, I'm, I rather do yeah. it that way. Or if I back to comic, like I'll talk about it on Twitter or Facebook. So, and even here, we'll shout out Kickstarters as well. So that's, yeah, it, it, but we, we try to cover as much as possible through the news as well. So the news, if we're not talking about Webtoon, you know, we're not talking about like the Avatar Webtoon, what we think. It's like, oh, we'll talk about the news of that. Like, check, please. We talked about this week. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 a little hard with like review, like you said, because we know so many creators because we create comics ourselves and we're in so many communities. So it's it's really hard to talk about those kind of books aside from like promoting them, you know, so. Mm -hmm. But that was a great question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We, you know, <laughs> I, I forgot that. where we were, but uh, I think yeah. we're on Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel, yeah. Miss Marvel Mutant Menace number two. Uh, she goes off to uh, Mojo World to uh, help Lila so Cheney. Much. <laughs> I figured you would. I mean, if you uh, were, not the you best got something completely different than whatever this was. Yeah, it was a weird story. It was just like this one off thing where she goes to Mojo World and becomes a rock star. 
<laughs> it was so weird. Uh, I, I liked that she like got all this fandom and stuff. It was fun if, if it was just like this, you know, this filler issue and an ongoing. But being a mini series where you're only getting four or five issues already and you throw this in there, it was a little, little odd, I think. But yeah, it was weird. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't anything that I felt too attached to here. So I was just like, no, oh, man. No, no. Like you said, it was just kind of mm. like, just weird. <laughs> Yeah, it was just it was an odd thing to throw in. It was like, okay, what random X character can we throw in, and what kind of story that's tied to the X characters can we really push that Miss Marvel is a mutant now? Oh, let's put her in Mojo World. <laughs> Even the music element was so weird. I was like, okay, is this yeah. really connect, like connected to Miss Marvel? And again, they had so many interesting plots from that first issue with like her friends and her family. They just don't touch upon it. And I was like, I mean, I like Miss no. Marvel. I'll continue to read it. But if I was on the fence with this book, this would be like, okay, I guess I'm not reading more. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree and understand that 100%. So, all right. So that brings us to our number threes then, right? Yeah. So mine's a book we already talked about. So I'll just go ahead and say it. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Mine Rangers. too. So there you go. Nice. Nice. We actually have one in common this week, at least. We did. We'll <laughs> so, see if we we'll, have any we'll, more. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I, I kind of doubt it just because of the way mine are. <laughs> and mm. Stuff you've already said. So we'll see. All right. Next book up we are talking about is Uncanny Valley issue number one. Did you read this? I did. Uh, I really okay, liked it. Cool. Um, nice. I yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was actually talking to Phil on the phone about like, oh, it's really interesting to read something like action comics where it's uh, this story that is so involved in DC comics. So you cannot read that and never read a Superman book. You've had or been reading Superman books for a really long time to understand what's going on. Yeah. It's like, who's bringing out? Who's these characters? Um, well, Uncanny Valley is so interesting to read because it, you don't need any of that baggage, but it, it grabs you right away. It's like that first issue is like, wow, okay, I'm in because you this boy's in trouble and not in trouble, but he literally, I guess, literally in trouble because he he gets a call to the principals. Yeah. Um, and then the mom has a secret and it's kind of revealed pretty quickly that her father is a cartoon character. You're like, oh, okay, wow, this is interesting. Uh, it, it does remind me a little bit of crossover that comic, but um. Hmm. Yeah, I really liked it. I thought I thought it was a really good first issue. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it as well. Uh, in my Friday first, I, I think I, I mentioned that like elements of it remind me of like Percy Jackson, where it's like the mom is keeping this secret from this kid that he's part of this uh, you know world that he has no idea, and that that kind of aspect of it mirrored that kind of story a lot. So I, I thought that was cool. But then you add in like the cartoon element, and then it's like a little bit Roger Rabbit. You know, the, this whole cartoon universe exists. And uh, from the cover art, we, we see that we're going to get like Street Fighter type characters, Looney Tunes type characters. And uh, I just think that's a really fun concept. And it's by the creator that does Stray Dogs and Feral. Um, so really that's cool. Cartoons. You know, it's going to be. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, I, you know, it's a, it's a cool and interesting concept. And I enjoyed that first issue as well. So uh, I'm curious to see it, if it continues to hold my interest once we fully in. in you know, get into that cartoon world a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, but good so far. All right. So Incredible Hulk is next. This is a book I don't read. So uh, this is all you. Uh, short. I don't, I, I haven't been liking this arc. Uh, and honestly, the previous arc either. I, I just feel like it's been spinning its wheels. I still like the book, but it's not as high as it was. Uh, I don't think yeah. the art is as strong either. Um, and yeah, this one, this issue just kind of spins its wheels again. So that's pretty much all I had to say about it. Gotcha. All right. On to our number twos then. So what was your number two? Mine was Action Comics. We already talked about it. Okay. Mine uh, was Green Lantern, actually. So. Cool. Which we also already talked about. So let's move into Wolverine, which is all me, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, not the best issue of this run. I really enjoyed this story with, uh, with the Sabretooth War that's been uh, going on, but this one, we're, we're getting towards the end of the story now, and we know that Laura's alive, and this one was just basically Wolverine fighting <laughs> Sabretooth, and, and uh, you see, like, these headless Sabretooths from the multiverse uh, fighting Laura and stuff. It was very action-heavy, not a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of story progression in this one, I think, and, and I think that's been true for the past couple of issues, uh, and it kind of lost 
the the appeal that it had in that first part to me. Uh, I, I Mike's probably still enjoying it, but I it's lost me a little bit, and I'm kind of just ready for to to get to the next part of this. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw uh, who was it that found like Quentin? Quentin's just ahead now <laughs> and discovered that, and uh, maybe there's a way to bring him back. I don't know. But uh, obviously there is because he's in the in the future books and stuff. Um, sorry, we just got a message from Mike that popped up on my screen, uh, <laughs> kind of filling filling us in on what's going on. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So I, hopefully Mike's enjoying this more than I am. I'm not loving it as much as I was at the beginning of this arc. So I read That's issue that. two and I didn't like it. So I was like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Doesn't seem like I'm right, so, too much. Right. And we already talked about Phantom Road. So I guess we're on to our number ones. Um, so mine's Transformers. Still by mm-hmm. default. I, I still love it. It's still got a lot of nostalgia. And, uh, you know, unlike you, I have more history with these characters and everything. So, um, yeah. What's yours? Mine is Uncanny Valley. So okay. we talked about it. I kind of thought liked that. It. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I was I was hyping it up pretty well. Uh, yeah. But honestly, it was really it's, it's, torn between that and action, though. Because action, I was... I was I was pleasantly surprised by that one. Yeah. Uncanny Valley also just outside of my top five. So I, I did really enjoy it. I just like the I like Green Lantern Transformers a little bit more than you did this week. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. And that's okay. Transformers, I'm not surprised by. Green Lantern, on the other hand, I usually do like more than you. So that's interesting that, yeah. that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I just like all the other characters and them coming together a little bit yeah. more. And, and then obviously the backup stories too. So. You like Jess. Right. I mean, I love you too, but I remember you really yeah. like Jessica Cruz. So I'm sure seeing right. her again was nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to see where those things would have fallen on Mike's list. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think Transformers still would have been up there for him. But the I feel rest like that's of them. number one. Yeah. I think so. I saw his thumbnail for his, because I, I try not to watch his videos. Uh, besides yeah. the hall, the hall is okay, so, but like the things that like would spoil, um, like I try not to watch it before our show. Right, so uh, right. I I just saw his thumbnail for oh ones to the bottom and you know one obvious ones at the top. So I'm guessing Transformers, and from the thumbnail, I'm guessing Thundercats is the one he's not in, enjoying. <laughs> yeah, and I get that. I t- I did read that as well. Excuse me. Um, it's just I don't know. There, it's it's a little slow. Uh, Thundercats is, and I, I don't think they're doing a really great job at, at like the, the character aspects of it either. So, yeah, I, I totally get that. But I'm also I was never a big Thundercats fan either. So let's get into our uh, most anticipated then, um, and I'll just read off Mike's real quick, and then we'll go into ours. So Mike's are Avengers Twilight issue number five, uh, Ghost Rider Final Vengeance number two, and Cobra Commander number four. Uh, only one of those is on my list. <laughs> we so, we matched a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, we did. So uh, let's let's talk about my number three, which is Wonder Woman, also on your list. Uh, Wonder Woman number eight. This is her going head to head with the Sovereign. Uh, she's under the power of the Lasso of Lies, which is going to be interesting. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, I don't remember exactly how that Lasso of Lies actually does work. Do you? Does I don't think I, we know. Yeah, I, I think yeah. we've only gotten like little tidbits about it. So that will be interesting to see if we do learn more. I've been really liking Wonder Woman, honestly. I think yeah. it's, the pacing's been really good. The art is always really good. So that's why it was easy. And honestly, like next week's there's not a lot of big books. So I was just like, oh, Wonder Woman's kind of easy one to put on there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You Unlike and I have this been enjoying week, that. which had a lot with like a lot of big books. Right. Like this, so, what, yeah. what are you guys say? I was just going to say, you and I enjoyed Wonder Woman a lot more than Mike did. So, yeah. um, no surprise it's not on his list. But, uh, yeah, I, I think this has been, like, the strongest Wonder Woman uh, run in such a long time for me. So I usually drop Wonder Woman in, in, like, issue two. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, this is an yeah. easy one to say. This is one of my favorites. Yeah, same, same. All right, so since I already mentioned it, I'll, I'll go into Cobra Commander real quick. Or... Yeah, I'll just go ahead and get that out of the way. Um, the reveal of Nemesis of Forcer last week, he's on the cover this week. That's going to be the main interest for me, seeing that confrontation between the the two of them and how that all works out. And I love the Dreadnought, so yeah, that's it. Cover that's I'm, I'm a big G.I. Joe fan. Yeah. To me. 
I know, right? <laughs> I, the, the, I don't even know what you just said, but I was like, what? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm I, I, I'm totally into these characters. So anyway, Spectacular Spider-Man issue number two. Uh, I really like the first issue. I think you liked it even more than I did. So, um, I did had a hard time picking my most anticipated this week. So I don't think I liked it as much. I remember. Uh, Mike really liked it. Oh, maybe it. I'm thinking of Mike. Um, yeah, 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 Mike really liked it. I didn't hate it. Like, I liked it. I thought it had a lot of potential. Yeah. But um, this was a hard choice this week. <laughs> I was just like, I really know I'm, I'm really looking forward to Wonder Woman and Kill Your Darlings. But the third one, I was like, I don't know. It's kind of a smaller okay. week. I, I hope to enjoy my comedy. You know what's so interesting? And I wasn't on last week. But I before I went on the show last two weeks ago, I, I had read Red Coat and Geiger and not yeah. Tiger, Red Red Coat and Rook. And yeah. I remember telling yeah. you guys, oh man, you know, the, the books weren't that great this week. And in my mind, I was like, yeah. I know that you guys are going to really like it though. And I'm guessing you guys probably really liked it. And I was like, in my mind, oh. I even told you guys that. I'm like, oh, I'm sure you guys really liked it. So you didn't watch the show last week. No, okay, I haven't had so a chance yet. Rook was both of our number ones and okay. by, by a mile. For both of us. It That's was so like interesting because I liked Rudd Coat yeah. more than Rook. <laughs> okay. Yeah. By far, that was like the best book we read the whole week. Like everything else was like paled in comparison to that book for both of us. So it was interesting. So so, so you're not going to read more Red Coat? Like obviously Rook was oh, your yeah. pick of the week, but. I liked Red Coat. I actually liked all three. I, I even liked Geiger. Uh, even though I didn't like that first volume, oh. I I actually enjoyed that first issue. And yeah, I really, we both really enjoyed all three of them. So I'll continue all of them so far. You know, yeah, we'll it just, I, it, I feel like it did what it did well for what it was going for, right? The first one's mm -hmm. post apocalyptic. You get a little nature in there. I was like, oh, that's cool for people who really like those type of stories. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. I'm like, oh, that's not for me. Not and then Red Coat, at all. Yeah. Yeah. And then Red Coat, yeah. I'm like, oh, there's some really interesting stuff here. A, the art, like for both of them, the art is really good. But I'm like, oh, it's cool that there's like these ghost creatures. But I'm like, oh, wow, the 1700s is also really not for me. So it's just like, it was such a specific thing where it's like, I know yeah. this is not my type of comic, but it doesn't make it a bad comic. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for sure. That's kind of what Mike and I said too. We, as we were talking about, it, we were both like, "These are totally not cats' thing, but <laughs> they're totally our thing." So <laughs> it's it's so funny. We we know each other so well that we know mm -hmm. what kind of stories each other will like. Uh, but yeah, we we really enjoyed them, and I totally get that it's not your thing. So I'm excited for those other ones though, because I remember even yeah. reading the Ghost Machine uh, on the the one shot where I read those first yeah. two, the Red Coat and the Rook one. I was like, oh god, I'm gonna hate Ghost Machine. And then as the series went on, yeah. I'm like, oh, I really like that one. I like this one. I like this one. Then that's the why I like Ghost family. Machine. Yeah, yeah, the one yeah. with the family. There's, there's, uh, I think there's a Francis Manipal. There was a lot of good ones that yeah. I was like, oh, the teenage one, like the, te the teenage uh, mm -hmm. people with powers. I like, oh, that's more right. my wheelhouse, and I'm, I'm so glad they're making books for every body it seems like right it's just like oh if you don't like these two books that's totally cool because you might really like this book yeah yeah it's and it's also interesting going back to that ghost machine uh kind of preview book it, it's like i can see those and be like okay these are cat books these are mike books and i'm kind of like in the middle where i like a little bit of both <laughs> so it's yeah it's kind of an interesting dynamic we have because you and i agree on certain things me and mike agree on certain things and then it's like you two though are at opposite end. So it's like, we really compliment each other, the three of us with our, uh, the stuff that we like. And, and it's interesting. The dynamic. How did you guys feel about she Hulk last, last week? Cause that was one I actually really enjoyed last week. And I remember Mike was, he, yeah. that's the one I can't predict with him. I'm like, you yeah. like it this week. And then <laughs> we were, we were split on it. I, I think yeah. I enjoyed it more and he enjoyed so it less than the that's last. So issue, interesting so, yeah. to me. <laughs> that's yeah. the only one I cannot tell Who's going to like what is She-Hulk? Right? Uh, everything else I could be like, oh, no, Mike's going to like this. Brad's going to like this. She-Hulk, I, I can never tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's. I, I was surprised I get his reaction to it. I was like, oh, I like this issue more. He's like, oh, I didn't like it because it didn't. It went this direction instead of that direction. I'm like, oh, okay. So, yeah, he, he's impossible to read on She-Hulk. It's so weird. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. We talked about that. Kill Your Darling is the only book we got left to talk about then. So this is the last is issue. Yeah, this last is issue. it. 
Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm so Me sad too. to see it go, you know? So because it's been consistent. I mean, it's just been it's yeah. just one of those reliable books. That's why again I was talking about like the the top three most anticipated. Like those, it's weird to be in a week where there's two books. I'm like, wow, this is so easy. And then that third one being a little hard, but like Kill Your Darlings, like I saw that and I was like, okay, there's a reason why I'm excited to go to the comic book store tomorrow. It's Kill Your Darlings. And yeah. you know, Wonder Woman's there too, but like Kill Your Darlings is like way above because I just want to see how right. it ends and it's just the art is so good, everything's just so good about it. Yeah. I this I I hope that they leave it op open ended for mm -hmm. like a continuation somewhere down the line. I I think you know with with the kind of world it is, I think that's always an option. Sure. Hopefully, but yeah, it's it's one of those books that's just a standout. And it's funny because hearing you talk about like the Ghost Machine stuff, I forgot this until we we started talking about this book. But Mike and I were both like Rook is like one of those books, like a Kill Your Darlings or a Transformers. It's just like it could be like one of those that we really look forward to above you know everything else so um for or noctera you guys really i feel yeah, like it reminded yeah. me a lot of noctera that's i said the same the thing time. to mike yeah. that's the first thing i said i was like it, this kind of reminds me of noctera <laughs> it's so funny you say that but yeah totally um but yeah kill your darlings i it's been consistent like you said you know from start to finish and i can't wait for this book this is one of the standouts and i'm sad to see that it's ending so so short of a run but you know it I, I also like that, that it's like this complete story. So I want to see we'll more see from this team, this creative team in general. Yeah. They seem like they just work sure. really well together. And, you know, I agree. Like, I, I also hate when things overstay its welcome. I rather want more. Right. I'm not a way where I feel like the story's not done, but like, I, I rather definitely yeah. be like, wow, well, like, Specs is a great example of a book that we mm -hmm. loved. And it's just like every yeah. issue was so good. And I'm like, I'm glad it didn't overstay its welcome because I'm I, I'm glad I could just remember that book as something that was really, really good, even if I don't have to see more of it. Right. Exactly. Same. All right. And that's it. That's all our most anticipated. So uh, I guess that's the show. That um, is the show. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. You want to no, close it out? You want me to do it? Okay. No, no, Whatever. go for it. All right. No, take it. All right. Sure. So uh, definitely. Give us those thumbs up if you like the show. We uh, we always appreciate that, and uh, it it does help. And you know, hopefully, Mike will be back with us next week. We did miss him this week, and uh, knock on wood, we'll have all three of us back next week. But definitely hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss the episodes when they go live, and you can join us live. Or if you don't get to, you can watch us post live and all that good stuff. Follow us across the social medias: your uh, Instagram, Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, join us on Tuesday nights and go back uh, Cat's Kickstarter while it's live. So yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> Until next Bye. time, thanks for watching.